Welcome back guys, let's get started on another mock-up. So, let's open up the hoodie file up in Photoshop, let's make a duplicate of our layer and put a solid color between it. So, we need to grab our quick selection tool and we need to go and grab the white background. And let's go ahead and, go and hit Q and go inside of our quick mask mode so that we can grab our paintbrush and paint out the rest of the background. Make sure that the white of the background is white and not pink. So paint with white as your foreground color, not black. And one thing I do is I just hold shift to go between two spots. It just helps to create a straight line and to help cover more ground. Now let's hit Q to hop out of quick mask and add a layer mask. Now don't forget to flip it with your command I and let's go ahead and let's make a new document. Let's just do your last name and then do apparel hoodie mock-up six by six inch 300 resolution just like before and press create. Now we need to go and grab that hoodie layer. So press on the hoodie layer, drag it over, shrink it down, put it in the center, make it look nice. And let's go ahead and do a solid color on top. It doesn't matter what color, just pick a color for right now and apply a clipping mask go between both layers and hold the option button and then click and apply color burn as the blending mode and the opacity to around 70 percent should be fine and click inside of the color fill layer mask grab your paintbrush set the hardness to around 80 percent and paint with black now this part is going to take just a bit of time, but it is going to look really nice once you do it all. So take your time here and work through this part. Okay, so once you have gotten to this point here, make sure it's all nice and clean. If you need to hit X on the keyboard to flip it to white to clean things up. But for now, we are going to do a new solid color for the drawstrings so that we can change up those colors as well. Pick a color, apply a clipping mask, bring the hoodie color selection back, and let's go grab our paintbrush and paint with black but you'll see that it's going to paint outside of the selection. So go to the select drop down at the top, go to the inverse, and now we can paint inside of just the drawstring. So paint with black inside of the drawstring, and then once you have that, go back up to the select drop down and go to deselect. Okay, now go to the drawstring layer mask and hit your command I to inverse it. So that is going to be the color directly onto the drawstring itself. Rename the layers, of course, and let's go and apply a color burn to the drawstring layer, and let's set the the opacity to be around 70%. That should look fine for this. Now let's zoom out, Command Zero on the keyboard, and let's go and press on the hoodie layer, and let's do a new levels adjustment so that we can make this look a little bit more vibrant. So take the middle slider to the left until it looks bright enough that you think it's going to be fine. We're just trying to match the color more. And let's go back to the hoodie layer and let's make a duplicate of it. Let's drag it up to the top and let's go back and apply the clipping mask to each of those three adjustments to be sent down to the original hoodie. For the top hoodie layer, let's just call that details and let's change the blend mode on that to be let's go with linear burn for right now and let's change the opacity let's take that way down to around i'd say 25 percent should be fine and let's go and apply a levels and let's drag the shadow and the midtones closer together and let's do a brightness and contrast adjustment and let's kind of brighten it up and take the contrast to be higher once you have that let's put a brand new blank layer at the top and let's name that artwork 
and right click on it and then convert it to a smart object. And let's double click inside of the left thumbnail of the artwork layer and let's apply a solid color for a temporary background so that it's going to help us apply the graphic onto the hoodie for right now. And I have supplied you guys with a couple of pictures. I'm going to choose the pea head, which is a panda head, and I'm going to go and apply some text to it. Now, it doesn't matter what you choose at this point. I'm just going to pick a font called Road Rage, and I'm going to type out the word panda. I will resize it and change the color to match the panda head color. Now, make sure to hit your save, file save, not file save as, but file save, and then hop back into the hoodie document and then resize it down and try to leave about two inches below the zipper because that's a traditional safe spot for screen printing and go back into the artwork document and take off the solid color so that we can show the graphic without that color so file save hop back over into the hoodie document and check out what you have now we need to mask out all of the zipper and the drawstring. So apply a layer mask to the artwork layer and of course bring back the hoodie color selection and then go inside of the right layer thumbnail of the artwork and go and do fill with black and before you flip it make sure to deselect it and then hit your command I to inverse it and there's a link between both the left and the right thumbnails for the artwork. Uncheck it and press on the left thumbnail so that you can move the artwork where you want it and the layer mask stays in place. So that is pretty nice. Now, let's go and press on the background layer and let's go and bring in the wall texture picture. Resize it to fit the whole document and right click on that layer and then rasterize layer because we need to take out the color so go up to the image drop down go to the adjustments and go to desaturate or command shift u now let's apply a solid color to it pick a color right now and let's do a clipping mask go between those two layers hold the option button and then click and let's change the blend mode to be linear burn and let's put it at around 70 percent on the opacity that should be fine rename it and call it background color and take off the right layer thumbnail now if you notice that there is a thin white outline through our picture that is from the hoodie there's also a thin white outline around the outside of the hoodie so we need to take care of that now bring the hoodie selection back and go up to the select drop down go to modify and go to contract do by one pixel that should be fine and of course if you paint inside the right thumbnail of the hoodie with black it's not going to do what we want so we need to go up to the select drop down at the top and press on inverse so that it sends the whole selection to the outside now we can go to the edit drop down go to fill and do the content size black to do it at one time now deselect it before you check it so select drop down and then deselect and you will see that the white is now gone and it looks nice and clean this is what we want now let's go and apply two blank layers below the hoodie and let's call the top one close shadow and the bottom one far shadow. Let's press on the close shadow and bring the hoodie selection back. Grab your paintbrush and make sure it's black as your foreground and paint right over top of just the hoodie itself so that we will start off with a black silhouette of the hoodie for both the close and the far shadow layer. And deselect it. Before we move on, you can hold the option button on your keyboard and click on the eyeball button to see that layer by itself, which is kind of nice. Now, right click on both of those shadows and convert them into a smart object before we get started on applying the blur. So we will do a Gaussian blur for the close and keep it relatively small for right now. We can always come back in and change it. And for the far, Let's bump it up to right around 16 to 20. It's going to be more, it's going to be softer. Take the opacity down. 
it's not going to be super intense but make it look pretty good and I would bump both layers to the bottom left just a bit so we are creating a shadow now if you want to you can apply a layer mask to the close sh shadow as well as the far shadow and just paint out certain spots that you don't want to have and just make it look more natural and realistic that's the whole idea here is just keeping things very simple and straightforward so take your time here and then paint it out maybe even switch to a very soft paintbrush so that it's going to blend out a lot more cleanly like you will see right here And just take the opacity down just a bit for both the close and the far shadow so it's not so intense we are creating a very fake very slight shadow here so press back onto the background layer and go bring in the picture of the wood panel hide the wall texture picture and you can adjust this picture of the wood to fit and rotate it just a bit because it is just a little bit crooked here and that should be fine rename it wooden background and we are going to do this one more time we have a cracked wall picture resize it up and do the same concept right click on it and I want you to rasterize that layer once you have named it so that we can go ahead and color it now you don't have to but I'd like to just take it out and desaturate the color even though it is gray I like to do that just in case so I'm going to make a copy of the background color, solid color layer, just because that is how I like it. Now I can change up that color to fit this a lot more cleanly so that it looks more natural. But that's the idea is that we can create these fake kind of backgrounds. Now grab all the backgrounds that you have and then put them into a folder and just rename it background. Put the shadows as well and just so on and so forth just keep it all well organized that's the idea here now let's take and duplicate the artwork layer because most people have a left chest option for maybe uh, having a smaller logo or a graphic there so just resize the left chest layer to fit in the left chest there it's going to be right next to the actual drawstring there and put both of those into a folder next so that if the person wants to they can choose between a full chest or a left chest and then once you have that you can get rid of the original background and then save it out as a PSD okay this is basically it here so if you have questions let me know but this is basically it and how to create a full-on apparel based mock-up and i hope this was helpful for you guys and i hope you guys have a good day see you next time